Let's talk about sorts. There's lots of places where we need to sort data, lots of ways that we need to sort data, and lots of ways that we can sort data. And so what we're going to do over the next couple of classes is talk about the algorithms that we can use to sort things. And we're going to compare those algorithms in a bunch of different ways. And I'll explain how we compare them in just a second. But before we actually talk about the sorting algorithms, I want to talk about some of the things behind sorting, some of the things that we need to think about. So if we have some objects, for example, if we have a list of numbers, like this, then we could sort them, for example, um, we could sort them like this. And so that would be a numeric sort, right? So they're numerically ordered. But we could also sort them alphanumerically, right? If we had a list of fruit, if we had some bananas, some oranges, and some apples, we could sort that list. But remember, what if we had um, capital letters, right? So we need to think about case-sensitive versus case-insensitive sorts, okay? So when we're sorting things, we need to think about how we sort them. And of course, with objects, as we've seen, for example, in the trees, we use the compareTo method to sort things, right? So compare to returns less than zero if something's smaller, equal to zero if they're the same, and greater than zero. And so just like we did in our trees, in our binary search trees, if we were sorting things and we were using generic objects, we would use compare to because we need to understand how objects are related to each other. For the purposes, for the purposes of talking about the algorithms, I'm only going to use numbers, and I'm only going to use numeric sort. Okay? The second thing that we need to think about, other than things that we can sort, is how we actually do the sort. So if you imagine a pile, sorry, if you imagine a shelf of books, and you want to sort that shelf of books, one of the ways that you could sort it is you could take all those books, throw them all onto the floor, and then pick out the book that you want first and put it back on the shelf. Pick out the next book, put it back on the shelf. Okay? So in that case, you need an additional piece of storage. You need the floor to do that. Another way that you can sort something is that shelf of books is to take a book, hold it in your hand, find out where it goes, and put it in the right place. Okay? So that only needs one piece of storage just for that individual book. It doesn't need storage for all of the books, like taking them and throwing them on the floor does. And so we have two different concepts here. If I take all of the books and I throw them on the floor, basically I need an equal amount of storage for my data structure, so another copy of my data structure. And that's called an out-of-place sort, okay? In contrast, if I leave my data structure intact and I just shuffle things within my data structure, so I don't have to have a separate copy of my data structure, that's called an in-place sort. So we have out-of-place sort and we have in-place sort. The next situation I need to worry about is what if I have duplicate elements in my list. So if I have my list of numbers, but now I have some duplicates in my list. Here's the first instance of number one, here's the second instance of number one, here's the first instance of number eight, and the second instance of number eight. 
So there's two different ways that I could sort this. If I sort this, and in my sorting algorithm, I can guarantee, I can guarantee that the first instance of number one ends up first, and the second instance of number one ends up second, and the third instance of number one ends up third, and the fourth instance of number one ends up fourth. And the same with the number eight, that the first instance ends up first, and the second instance ends up second, and so on. Right? So if I guarantee that the order of duplicates in the list after I've sorted it is the same as the order of duplicates in the list before I sorted it, that's a stable sort. So a stable sort is that I can guarantee that the order of duplicates remains unchanged after sorting. An unstable sort is the opposite. In an unstable sort, you can't guarantee that that's true. If I took all the books and threw them on the floor and shuffled them up somehow, I couldn't necessarily guarantee that the book that I take out and put back on the shelf ends up in the same order if I've got two copies of the same book. Right? So we have out-of-place sort, we have in-place sort. We have stable sort, we have unstable sort. And then the last thing that we're going to think about, well not the last thing, but the next thing that we're going to think about for our sorting algorithms, let me write it up here, is our complexity. And we're going to think about basically three different conditions when we talk about complexity of the sorting algorithms. So we're going to think about the worst case. Worst case is often, not always, but often, if a list is exactly reverse sorted. So if you wanted it sorted lowest to highest, if you if you're given a list that's sorted highest to lowest, that's often the worst case for a sorting algorithm. It doesn't matter. We're going to think about the average case, and that is generally if you're given a completely randomized list of numbers and you're trying to sort them. And we're going to think about the best case. And we'll see an example where very soon, where the worst case, the average case, and the best case are different. Okay, And so for all of our sorting algorithms, we worry about worst case, average case, best case, complexity. We worry about whether we need extra memory. And we worry about the end result of sorting duplicates.